what's up guys so today i'm going to teach you guys how to or i'm gonna teach you guys how i go about um structuring my tone especially when it comes to like atmospheric black metal and stuff using my practice amp and the practice amp that i'm using is relatively inexpensive i got it at a local music shop about four years ago and i'm gonna try to look for a link where you guys could get it as well and i'll post that in the description so what we have here is a nux frontline 15. so let me get it for you guys so this is what it looks like and as you can tell i'm already dialed in so i'm gonna be this switch means upwards is distortion clean so says distortion, distortion right now and um these over here are the effects and i have my reverb on um this one doesn't go by reverb um hall would be the name of the reverb on this and it's pretty cavernous and pretty fucking epic and the way i dial in my tone is my gain is all the way up my bass is around 11 o'clock a middle is all the way up. I don't like scooping my mids. For me, mids give my riffs clarity. And it gives my, um, especially when it's like heavily distorted, the mids really bring out the notes. And then treble is all the way up. And as you can see, the little white stripes right here. Okay, so let's plug this baby in. All right, so next what I'm gonna show you guys is how I go about miking my amp and how I go about giving my riffs a big white sound. Now, this is something new. What I've been um, messing around with in the past few videos is a plugin. So this tone is gonna be based on the practice amp. And then I'm gonna teach you guys how I carve my tone with the plugin I use. And the plugin I use is a paid plugin. It's from Archetype or Neural DSP. And it's the Toast and Abasi package. So yeah. All right, so now that I mic'd my amp, and the way I mic my amp is I usually have the microphone pointing towards the outer edge of the cone. So, like directly in the center is more like staticky, I guess. It's more thin. And then towards the right is like a good balance of bass and treble. So I usually mic my um, amp with the microphone facing towards like the outer rim of the, of the speaker or of the comb. And like I said to the previous section, I have it dialed in with gain all the way up. Volume, I have it down because I don't want to disturb the piece, but my, my I'll, I'll teach you how to fix that right now. And then bass, like at 11, mid, it's all the way up. Treble, all the way up. And then the little red light is that I have my amps reverb. Okay, and up here, so we're using the Reaper DAW. And let me just clear this one to show you guys. So what you wanna do if you're here on Reaper, you double click and you get a new track, you arm the recording, all right? So right now, if I were to play, it's gonna show you the level. And right there, that's a good level, okay? It's not peaking, it's not fucking going overboard. And this guy right here is what I wanna to talk to you about. Usually, like, if you could see how the gain is all the way up, that kind of 
makes up for my amp being at a low volume right now. Um, it would be beneficial for the knob to be more in the middle and the volume on the amp up. Yeah, but for the sake of this video and for my logistics due to not wanting to disturb any piece or anything, I'm going to do it this way. Which could be like a hack for some of you guys who are trying to record more discreetly as well. But when I have more, um, I would say more privacy, I'll teach you guys how to record with more volume. But I'd have the game all the way up over here basically and watch how the light turns green. No, that's basically showing you that the signal is healthy. If that turns red, that means it's too loud and it's going to end up sounding like shit. So now what I'm going to do now is record a riff. All right, so now that you're all set up with uh, your amp mic and then you have your DAW, I'm using Reaper. So once you have your program set up on the computer, and your levels are all set. Now it's time to record the riff. Okay, so that was one take I recorded. What I like to do to give it a big atmospheric sound is I at least record two different takes of the same riff. And what I do then is I just pan one to the left, pan one to the right, and I make it sound really big. So, all right, so now we got the first riff recorded, right? <laughs> So with the first riff recorded, I'm going to go into my effects chain and since we're basically miking a cab that already has a, a tone set up and everything, you know, there's no need for any virtual stuff. So what I usually like to do first is choose either an EQ or compression and what I do usually Let's go with compression first. And the good thing about Reaper is it has some ones that are stock. What I usually do for a quick, easy compression is I usually go to the one where it says distorted electric guitar, double click on the white, go to the EQ, click on that. So now what I like to do when it comes to uh, EQ work. Let me sit down my guitar. When it comes to EQ work, what I usually like to do is I usually go to uh, each extreme of the frequencies and I get rid of all the bassy frequencies I don't want and all the super high end pitch frequencies I don't want. So I clean it up a bit and then I go into the mid range and I get rid of any little annoying frequencies I don't want there. So let's put this on repeat and let's work on this. Turn off the metronome.
That'd be sick, fucking underwater riffage. I want to get rid of some of that static, that statiness, the static, staticiness, I guess. If that's even a word. Let me turn it down a bit because it's going to get pretty fucking annoying quick right now. This is an idea I took from another video I saw. Let me bump up the low mid end kind of a bit. All right, so now with that said, It clipped when I fucking shot up that mid-level frequency, but now with that, we're gonna go back and record the second riff. So now I recorded the second riff as well, and we're gonna do the same thing. I usually just drag the same comp the compression over. But for the EQ, I like to EQ the second track, even though they're basically identical somewhat. So let me uh, single this guy out. I like to EQ it as its own. Let's see. Turn it down, I'm gonna spike this shit. Hear that graininess? That's what we don't want. So let's take this slightly underneath right here. Let's do another one, just for... It's kinda grainy there. Bump up the... Low mids. All right, so now what we're gonna do is pan each one left and right. Sick. We reset this. For the drums next i'm gonna add drums and but this video is mainly on tones so i'm gonna do that on my own and yeah that is how i get a diy black metal tone pretty grim pretty raw for my little little guy right there my practice amp by nux this fucking this amp you know it fucking crushes it's pretty cool simple and i'm using the ltd um, that one, I guess, MH-53, you know, the setup's pretty simple, I got a Focusrite, Baby Yoda, alright guys, cheers.